Hello, my name is Emilia Gomez Uribe, and today I'm going to be exploring the theme of images of identity present in our art history curriculum, including the cultural, social, and political aspects of identity. So first of all, what is an image of identity? Identity can be defined as the fact of being or the feeling that you are a particular type of person or organization. This can include cultural, social, and political aspects that make up part of who a person or organization is. To convey identity in art, there must be elements that resonate with what a person feels identified with. So first, we have the Tlatilco figure from Unit 1. The Tlatilco fem female figurine was made in central Mexico at the site of Tlatilco sometime between 1200 to 900 BCE, and it's made from ceramics. I chose the Tlatilco figure as a symbol of identity because in Mexico, duality is a prominent part of the Mexican culture. It is a recurring theme with various Mexican deities, such as the twin deities Tlatloc and Huitzilopochtli. In Mexico's idea of duality, it is usually about how two opposites complement each other. For example, in the Tlatilco figure, the duality represented here is thought to be based on the duality ba between life and death. This is further proved by the figure's emphasis on the fertility propagated by the breast and the large hips as fertility, which was essential to survive in prehistory. Yet, the figure is used as a funerary object, which serves to prove the duality between life and death suggested by the figure's face. Next, we have Tutankhamun's tomb for Unit 2, which, in, which was made in New Kingdom of Egypt during the 18th dynasty in 1323, made out of gold with inlay of enamel and semi-precious stones. I chose this as a representation of identity because this is indicative of a part of ancient Egypt's culture as they had a government system ruled by pharaohs and had a distinct approach to death. In Egyptian culture at the time, pharaohs were most important and powerful figures, so they were given the most importance during the sacred process of death. They believed that when someone died, they would need to embark on a journey in the afterlife where they would be judged based on their lives by the gods. To help the pharaohs through the trials they would face in the afterlife, Egyptians would bury pharaohs with valuable items from their life and wrap them in a coffin like this one for protection and luck. Certain symbols were also thought to aid them, such as the falcon wings, crossed arms, crook, flail, headpiece, and postiche, which were either symbols of the gods or of power. Tutankhamun was also buried with his stillborn daughters, which are believed to help him in the afterlife. Since this piece has so many elements that are reminiscent of the Egyptian culture, this piece is appropriate for the image of identity. This is the Church of St. Foy in Con Conquest, France, made during 1050 to 1130 CE out of stone, which I picked for the image of identity in Unit 3. The primary function of this piece is as a pilgrimage site for Christians to show their devotion and piety on the route of Santiago de Compostela. Also known as the Camino de Santiago, the pilgrimage of Santiago de Compostela was a spiritual and physical self-mortification where Christians were, would follow the path of James the Apostle and reflected on their religion and beliefs. Because this pilgrimage was an integral part of Christianity, this serves as an image of spiritual and cultural identity for Christians at the time, as it demonstrates their beliefs and its importance. For Unit 4, I chose The Jungle by Wilfredo Lam, made in 1943 on gauche on paper, mounted on a canvas. Lam has heritage from Cuba, Africa, and China, and lived primarily in Cuba, so he saw firsthand the discrimination and hardships that Afro-Cubans faced. This prompted him to paint this painting, which serves as a commentary on the oppression of sl and slavery of Afro-Cubans. Having family directed affa affected by these issues, he wanted to show people the effects of discrimination and oppression, so he included elements of African and Cuban culture, such as African masks and santeria, which is a combination of Christianity and voodoo. He also portrayed these figures between sugar canes, creating a sense of chaos to evoke sympathy for everything slaves had to endure. As this piece is an integral part of Lamb's culture and history, this is part of his identity. 
one that he wants to share and comment on with the world. For Unit 5, I chose Templo Mayor in Tenochtitlan under the Aztec Empire between 1375 to 1520 CE. Aztecs believed in folklore surrounding the gods and that they had to appease them through rituals. As this temple is a testament of their devotion to the gods, this serves as a source of their religious identity. Furthermore, it is believed that this is the site where Mexico's national symbol, an eagle perched on a cactus eating a snake, was first found, so it also serves as the country's national identity that is, and symbol that is found on their flag. For Unit 6, I chose the Golden Stool from the Ashanti Civilization, made around 1700 CE, from gold over wood and cast gold attachments. It is believed that when Osei Tutu unified and created the Ashanti nation in 1700, the golden stool fell from the heavens and is believed to house the soul of the Ashanti people. The symbolic meaning of the stool is so important to the civilization that it is mounted on its own stool as it is too sacred to touch the ground and is the connection between the heavens and earth. The stool is also sac so sacred that the Queen Mother responded with war when the British attempted to take it. Because this stool is a symbol of the essence of the Ashanti people and is so important to their culture, this qualifies as a symbol of the Ashanti people's identity. For Unit 7, I chose the Kaaba in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, made in 631 to 632 CE, with multiple renovations, made from granite masonry covered with silk curtain and calligraphy in gold and silver wrapped thread. The Kaaba was an, was, has a high importance in Islamic culture, and Islam follows five pillars, two of which involve the Kaaba. Um, they are that Muslims must pay pray facing the Kaaba five times a day and make a pilgrimage to the Kaaba at least once in their lives. The pilgrimage to the Kaaba is made by thousands of Muslims every year and is so important because it is symbolic of their journey and triumph of Muhammad. Because this is such a key aspect of the Islamic culture, it is safe to say that it represents a part of the Muslim's identity. For Unit 8, I chose Chairman Mao en route to Aniwan which is a color, color lithograph made in 1969 CE based on an oil painting by Liu Qinhua. This piece is propaganda spread by the Chinese government around the late 20th century to spread enthusiasm for communism and Mao Zedong as their leader. Being the primary communist leader of China, he was responsible for the political reformation of the country that affected everyone living in China at the time. During his reign, there was more violence present along with other with artists fearing for their future as traditional art was denounced and artists were tortured and killed. This was only one of the oppressions China faced during Zedong's rule. Because Mao Zedong played such an integral role in China's politics and the way of life of those living under his rule, this piece shows an integral symbol of their identity. For Unit 9, I chose the Staff God from Rarotonga, Cook Islands, made in the early 18th to late 19th century from wood, tapa, fiber, and feathers. This piece was made to protect the mana or soul of the deity of the society. Generations would continue to add on layers to the staff as layers prevented the mana from leaving as it would become useless if it did leave. The entire village was involved in the process of preserving the staff and mana as women would make the tapa and men would add on to it. As this was a tribute to the to Teng Tengaroa, their primary god, and is passed down so many generations, it is clearly a symbol of identity for the natives of Cook Islands. Oh. Lastly, for Unit 10, I chose Rebellious Silence by Shireen Nashat, made in 1994 from Ink on Photograph. At the time this was made, Iran faced a lot of violence, war, and oppression, especially on women as they were restricted in nearly everything. Nashat took this opportunity to express the silent power that women have that is not acknowledged by the Western world through, th through this piece to show the world that they are stronger and more powerful than they think they are. This piece features calligraphy, a part of their cultural identity, and is from a poem about the martyrdom and the role of women in the revolution. This piece gives power to Iranian women 
as her gaze is powerful and her face is separated by a rifle to show that she is armed. It challenges the four symbols the Western world associates with the Muslim world, the veil, the gun, the text, and the gaze. And she gives them all a new meaning with more power, and this identity rings true with a lot of Iranian women who have experienced the same effects of the war and violence. So the connecting thread between all these pieces is that they all give a deeper look into what a person or group of people identify with and what makes them into the people that they are. And it gives people who don't know much about their aspects of their identity an understanding of a different perspective. It also calls for a celebration of each person or group's identity by making the pieces they are establishing and showing other people who they are. And this is my bibliography. Thank you.